Hello, my name is Yvonne, and I am a 2022 PharmD candidate. I will be talking about Carvedilol, also known as Coreg or Coreg CR. To start us off, I will be going over some main patient counseling points for Carvedilol. So Carvedilol is used for the treatment of high blood pressure and also for heart failure. It is best to take this medicine with food or milk and at the same time every day. Some of the more common side effects include dizziness, headache, low blood pressure, weight gain, or unusual tiredness or weakness. These are some of the more serious side effects, and they include itching, hives, swelling of the face, hands, mouth, or throat, slow, fast, or uneven heartbeat, a change in urination, chest pain, leg pain or numbness, rapid weight gain, shaking, trembling, confusion, or unusual bleeding or bruising. If you notice any of these side effects, be sure to contact your doctor right away. So just a quick overview, Carvedilol is a beta blocker with alpha blocking activity. It is indicated for heart failure, which it will help in lowering your heart rate, blood pressure, and any strain on your heart. It is also used for hypertension or high blood pressure and it helps by preventing strokes, heart attacks, or any kidney problems. So for Carvedilol's mechanism of action, it is a non-selective beta adrenergic blocking agent with alpha-1 adrenergic blocking activity and no intrinsic sympathomimetic activity. The exact mechanism of the antihypertensive effect produced by the beta adrenergic blockade is not known, but may possibly involve suppression of renin production. The beta adrenergic blocking activity decreases cardiac output. The alpha-1 adrenergic blocking activity blunts the presser effect of phenylephrine, causing vasodilation and reducing peripheral vascular resistance. The mechanism by which carvedilol produces a beneficial effect in congestive heart failure is also not known, but may be attributable to beta adrenergic blockade and vasodilation. In turn, this decreases cardiac work and helps take the strain off of the heart. The dosage formulations come in tablets and extended release capsules. For the capsules, they include 10, 20, 40, and 80 milligrams in both brand and generic. As for the tablets, they come in 3.125, 6.35, 12.5, and 25 milligrams for the brand and generic. For dose recommendations in heart failure, Prior to initiation, be sure to minimize fluid retention. An initial dose of 3.125 mg orally twice daily for two weeks is recommended. If the patient is taking any concomitant medications, be sure to increase the dose of diuretics for fluid retention. For hypertension, an initial dose of 6.25 mg orally twice daily is recommended. And for a myocardial infarction or heart attack, an initial dose of 6.25 mg orally twice day is recommended. For dose adjustments for renal impairment, if they have mild to severe impairment, no dose adjustment is needed. But if there is worsening of renal function that occurs during up titration, be sure to reduce the dosage or discontinue. And for hepatic impairment, if there is mild to moderate impairment, no dose adjustment is needed but for severe impairment, the use is contraindicated. Some warnings and precautions before taking carvedilol. You wanna be aware of patients that have ischemic heart disease, PVD or peripheral vascular disease, renal insufficiency or hyperthyroidism. This may cause worsening of these conditions or possible masking of symptoms like in hyperthyroidism. Pheochromocytoma myasthenia gravis, floppy iris syndrome. There appears to be no benefit in discontinuing any alpha blocker therapy prior to surgery. Syncope or postural hypotension. An increased dosage may worsen heart failure. And avoid abrupt discontinuation. It should be gradually tapered to avoid any acute tachycardia, hypertension, and or ischemia. Contraindications. They should not be used in patients that have acute heart failure, asthma, second or third degree AV block, severe bradycardia, except in patients with a functioning artificial pacemaker, cardiogenic shock, 
and severe hepatic impairment. And some monitoring parameters. Be sure to check blood pressure, base need for dosage increase on trough blood pressure measurements, and for tolerance on standing systolic pressure one hour after dosing. Heart rate, renal function such as the BUN, especially in patients with increased risk for developing renal dysfunction. Be sure to monitor during dose titration. Liver function and blood glucose in diabetics. Here are my references, and thank you for listening to my presentation.